One of my favorite areas in Shadowbringers was the fabled Lake Kingdom of Il Meg, a beautiful show of a location where colors blend into a rainbow no matter where you look. It is here where we set our sights on the Fey folk who inhabit this serene area. Today, we talk about the creatures you will meet in Il Meg, the story behind who they are in Final Fantasy XIV, and finish with their real life etymology as to learn just where Team Yoshida got their inspiration. This is the Fey folk of Il Meg. Fairies, who are the playful bunch, they act more like the guards of the area and roll and playful pranksters in nature. Fairies are possibly the second most dangerous race in Il Meg, being able to twist and manipulate magic to an incredible level, meaning they can turn normal folk into plants and bushes. They even call them their children. The only way to gain their trust and pass through their illusion is to play with them. No matter the game, the fairies will play with anyone they want, whoever they are, for any reason they can think of. Farasitha, Krakleth. And they can either reward you by letting you pass, as long as you play with them later, or get turned into a plant anyway because they felt like it. Fairies are both dangerous and fun, and with them keeping wanderers out of Ilmeg, they set themselves up as the kind of gatekeepers of Ilmeg. The Numo are more civil than their pixie ilk, rather keeping ties to their human neighbors unlike the rest of the valley. Numo are highly intelligent but would rather keep to simple living. Being as smart as they are, the Numo are masters of creation magic, few of which you can see flying in a certain area, these little piggly-like creatures known as pixies. So I'm just gonna have to stop myself here. I know I am prone to saying the wrong thing, so here I am going to fix this right now. Uh, every time I said fairies during the pixie portion, I meant to say pixie. Now here, I'm going to say pixie again for the porksies. Now these are called porksies not pixies and i do apologize for that i i kind of wrote that in the script and i don't know why and i never thought of going back and thinking maybe this was wrong but here i'm saying it right now these are porksies and when i was trying to say fairies in the beginning and probably for the rest of this entire video when i show the pixies on screen i mean pixies i am an idiot i am a total klutz and this is what i get for rushing my edits 
These creatures are made of clay and have intelligence of their own, but these piglies are but one of many creation magic beings for which you see in one particular dungeon the Grand Cosmos, the home of arguably the most intelligent Numo you've had contact with thus far. And judging by your vigorous greeting, I dare say the feeling is mutual. To be sure, a simple shake of the hand would have sufficed by way of welcome, but I shan't complain. But you must be wondering as to the purpose of our visit. We come to beg your assistance in a most urgent matter. Sh shake <laughs> Beg? Our comrades' very souls are in danger. If we are to save them, we will need the benefit of your unsurpassed knowledge on the matter. Please, will you not sit and hear our plea? Oh, how dare you! How dare you speak thus in my presence! The Amaru were originally beastly creatures meant to be mounts for their human partners in the Norveron continent. Only a rare few awaken to a sort of magical sentience where they become greatly intelligent and vastly long living. And when I mean greatly intelligent, I mean they can talk now. The pixie folk happily accepted their existence as a sort of new type of fey folk, sensing the magic within them and protecting them from outside invaders. Being a creature of larger stature, these flying creatures are physically the strongest in the valley, but in terms of personality they may be the most docile, not wanting for anything but a peaceful existence. They even extend their help to any mortal who they come across, and because of their past relationship with their master so long ago, and the common thing between all the Amuro who have gained their magical sentience, that being they were all loved greatly and taken care of by their human masters, and treated as family rather than just mounts or pets, the Amuro are considered the peace talkers of the valley. Ah, my medallion! You found it! Oh, I know not how to thank you. It is my most treasured possession. A gift from a dear departed soul. He was a traveler, and together we journeyed to the ends of the world and back again. When I was young. In those days, I could not speak. But we found joy in each other's company nonetheless. Oh, the memories. This medallion he found during an adventure. Fashioned it into a necklace for me, his partner in crime. I had not the words to tell him then, but it filled my heart with pride. I was so, so happy. His name was Artbert, and he was my friend. Giant beavers are a bit of a creep factor in Il Meg. They are supposed to be a threat to the fairies, and as they are known to have them disappear and adding one more giant beaver to their ranks, they are considered a dangerous species. The fairies ponder about their existence and are warned to never encounter them. Some fairies think they may eat their kind, making them the pixies' only predator. Some think they steal the souls of fey folk, but these theories are usually unfounded, and we, as the player, only have one theory to their creation. That being, they ambush a fairy by tricking them and turning them into a giant beaver to grow their ranks. Fairies are free-spirited and not really too bothered by one's own discretion or any kind of rule. They will warn their fellow fairy, but if Feo Ool shows us anything, it is that fairies aren't above tricking and hurting their own kind. If a fairy gets into trouble, it's up to them in getting themselves out of that trouble. But just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently, I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Very well, as your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. enough for you to think of any new games though apparently if i were you i'd be bored of myself 
Now let me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, she will never be yours. Never, never, ever! Oh, not even a bit. But look, what about the others? Surely we can keep them. No, no, no! You can't keep them either! They're for my amusement and mine alone! And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of his bag all over your precious village! There'll be cold, hard metal, furry, festering food, stinky, sweaty small clothes, and... And all manner of other terrible, unmentionable things. How would you like that, hmm? All right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? Just while the others go and see Urianje? Last, and possibly the most dangerous fey folk in Ilmeg, the Fwath. These frog-like creatures live in the waters of Ilmeg, and also have a kingdom somewhere deep in the mountains within the area. Of course, being a fey folk, these beings have a caveat that makes them quite dangerous. They like drowning people. Now the Fwath are very playful, much like their pixie cousins, but unlike the pixies, no matter what you do, it's almost 100% assured you are going to drown in their presence. The Fwath? do not make deals. They play with their victims promising a reward only to corner them, drown them underwater, take their spirits, and make yet another fwath out of them. There is a saying in Ilmeg that even the fairy folk go by, never deal with the fwath. Ah, but you my friend, you are mighty indeed, and pleasing to the eye besides. I want to see more of him! Yes! Yes! I could watch him forever! Why don't we just make him one of us? Yes! One of us! 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 What a fine idea! Why ever didn't I think of that? You may have the crown, but in exchange, we will have you! Now, of course, I can't talk about Ilmeg without talking about Titania. She is, without a doubt, my favorite trial in Shadowbringers, though some would beg to differ due to her childlike persona and her extreme fight being a bit tricky. Which, by the way, it's not tricky. You guys just suck. Get good, homie. But I love this woman so much, I memorized both her normal fight and her extreme fight, while also ste- I mean, winning her mount while I was playing with my friends and farming her trial. Yeah. Winning. That's what I did. Titania is the queen, or king, of the fairies in Ilmeg. Her duty is to rule the land and the fey folk as a sort of figure and conscience. You see, fey folk can be rather rambunctious, so Titania acts as their control output. You know, making sure that they don't turn too many humans into plants, or drowning a lot of them, or possibly making bad deals, or, uh, you know playing with them forever. However, since she had been kept in the castle the whole time as a light warden, Titania has only acted as a prisoner of her own land, with her subjects acting as her prison guards. Why? Why did you imprison us? Such boredom, such tedium have we suffered. It is unfair. Unfair. Come. Come and play. 
play with us. So now we know who the Fey Folk are, but how did they come to be and what are their real life origins? Well, starting with the fairies, these little guys are quite sad when it comes to their birth. In Final Fantasy, fairies are born when a child dies. So every fairy you see in the game was a child who died but still had the will to play and have fun. Sometimes they don't even know that they died. Yeah, that's kind of morbid. This will and their need to have fun is defined within the fairy's nature, as you have witnessed upon your arrival in Nomeg. Their etymology is much deeper. The English fairy derives from the early modern English fairy, meaning realm of the fae. Fairy, in terms, derives from the old French form fair eerie, a derivation from fae from vulgar Latin fata, with the abstract noun suffix eerie. They are thought to be many things in origin, deriving from all sects of myth, legends, and religion. Legendary creatures originating from European culture, this includes Celtic, Slavic, German, English, and French folklore, seen as a form of spirit. As I quote from Wikipedia, Myths and stories about fairies do not have a single origin, but are rather a collection of folk beliefs from disparate sources. Various folk theories about the origins of fairies include casting them as either demoted angels or demons in a Christian tradition, as minor deities in pagan belief systems, as spirit of the dead, as prehistoric precursors to humans, or as elementals. That is a lot of origins. And the word fairy doesn't just mean the pixie kind we are all familiar with, but gnomes, goblins, and sprites, to name a few. The fairy in 14 derived from a form of winged pixie, being the most common fairy known to humankind. This goes without saying that every fae folk in Ilmeg is a form of fairy according to 14, but the pixie-like ones we know about are the most common type we see in-game and in real life with other entertainment media. Real life etymology only really applies to the common fairy and not to the rest of the fae folk in Ilmeg. For example, the Amaro are based on the mythological creature, the Amaru. The serpent dragon-like cryptid is a legendary creature based in South America, associated with the Tiwanaku and Inca Empire. This Inca myth is usually depicted on art as a double-headed serpent with one drawn as a bird and the other as a puma. They are said to live in the earth under lakes and rivers, and were told to have the ability to travel the spirit realm of the subterranean world. Of course, the Amaro and Final Fantasy XIV have no such abilities, but their likeness is uncanny. The Fwath are a bit different from their etymology counterpart. In some descriptions, the Fwath are water spirits that look closely like mermaids. In more known myths, they usually look like an aquatic creature, and in some, they have no shape within the water. However, this description also describes their children, which are depicted in some stories. A Fwath literally meaning hate in Scottish Gaelic and Irish Gaelic, designates a class of malevolent Highland Gaelic mythological water spirits, inhabiting the sea, river, fresh water, or sea locks. They even have a tale to them, the Brawlikin, which depicts a man encountering an angry Fwath due to him accidentally boiling a Brawlikin, which was a liquid creature with no defined shape and was also the Fwath's child. Fortunately, the Brawlikin had limited speech and could not blame the man for his wrongdoings. Now, other than the giant beaver, the new Mo do not have real life counterparts. Instead, they derive from a race of the same name, but a different game. Ivalice is the set world for the game Final Fantasy XII or Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. They act as NPCs in XII and playable characters in the Tactics game. They had an affinity for magic and had the appearance of calm dog like creatures. They had three times the lifespan of Humes or humans, so they almost always come out as wise people. They reprised this role in 14 with little changes, for the exception of their lifespan being much longer. They still dabble in magic as I've already explained before, mastering the magics of creating life, and they are just as wise as they were depicted before but now instead of being nomadic, they are settled in one place while also defending their home from an opposing faction of the same race. Now lastly, and certainly not least, Fairy King Titania. Based on the fictional character Titania the Fairy Queen, created by William Shakespeare in between 1595 and 96 in the play A Midsummer Night Dream. In traditional folklore, the Fairy Queen has no name. Shakespeare took the name Titania from Ovid's Metamorphosis, where it is an appellation given to the daughters 
of Titans. Now, according to the wiki, Shakespeare's Titania is a proud creature and as much of a force to contend with as her husband, Oberon. She and Oberon engaged in a marital quarrel over which of them should have the keeping of an Indian changeling boy. This quarrel is the engine that drives the mix-ups and confusion of the other characters in the play. Due to an enchantment cast by Oberon's servant Puck, Titania magically falls in love with a rude mechanical aka a laborer, Nick Bottom the Weaver, who has been given the head of a donkey by Puck, who feels it's better suited to his character basically calling him a jackass. Titania certainly retains some of the persona in 14, but she is more or less depicted as a playful child stuck in a woman's body. I, however, love this woman, even though she's basically a hundreds of years old spirit who would probably rather pull my limbs off while saying it's a game, rather than a nightly flight through Il Meg on top of my fairy dragon, which plays her theme on repeat. Il Meg, to this day, is my favorite area in the game. It had a strong mysterious beginning when you entered the lands and finished with one of my favorite trials in the game thus far. It not only has interesting characters, but it also has the tank job quest line where you got to know Brandon, one of the Warriors of Darkness, and his past life as a knight before he was disgraced. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous during the day, and the lore behind the flooded town under the castle just hits the note for kingdoms that failed to stay established during the flood. Without fail, other than Raktika, Ilmeg is my favorite area in Shadowbringers, and I'm sure many would agree that it has the best character to come out of this expansion. Feo Ul. Such heartlessness or something is cold and cruel and heartless. Summon us in times of need, we expressly said. Yet what should we find but the final battle joined without so much as a whisper of our name? Yes, yes, we may also have said that we fay folk have no interest in the struggles of men, but if our adorable sapling had come crying to us for help, we would of course have flown to his aid, of course we would. What are we to do with him? We are so very, very sad. You will play with us. Cheer us up again! This I did not expect, but I will gladly accept the help. Thanks for watching my video, I know I haven't been putting out much. Real life is really kicking my ass, but I'm going to try and find a way for me to put out weekly videos that'll come out on Sunday. So I will try to get my video uploaded on Saturday, where it will be ready for Sunday morning. And uh, well, it's, it's just a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of scheduling, and uh, I'm trying my best. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and take care. Stay healthy out there, guys.